Hello guys, welcome back to E7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily E7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the Excel stiffness. So I will try to explain this topic with the help of the two figures. One we can see here on the left side is the in the column, the reinforced concrete column or maybe the simple column and this is fixed ended column. While on the right side we have a simply supported beam. So let's suppose that this is in a column and we have the axis of the column this is the axis of the column so and there is a concentrated load in a concentrated load of magnitude p is acting along the axis of the column so the load which acts along the axis is known as the axial load because this load acts along the axis so we call is the axial load so due to this axial load acting on the column there will, there will be some reaction to this upcoming load and this there will be some resistance to this upcoming load in the column. So this resistance to the upcoming axial load is known as the axial stiffness of the column. So the axial stiffness is actually the resistance to the axial load and axial stiffness I can write the formula for the axial stiffness is E a dividing by the L. Now this formula is used to find out the axial stiffness for any column where the E represents the elasticity of the material used in this column. A is the cross-sectional area of the column. It may be a square column or rectangular column depends on the designer while L is the length of this column. So by knowing all these properties, all these values, the elasticity, area and length of the column, we will get the axial stiffness for any column. It shows that the if we have a larger area of the column A, then we have the higher axial stiffness because it is directly related to the area. It is indirectly proportional to the area. Similarly, if we have higher elasticity material used in the column, we will have higher axial stiffness. We will have higher resistance to the upcoming load. If you have smaller length, then we will have higher axial stiffness. So we should keep in mind that these three factors are very important in deciding the axial stiffness of the column. Also, higher the stiffness of the column, we will have higher load. It will take higher axial load if you have higher resistance. And we can increase this axial stiffness by changing these three factors, elasticity, area and length of the column. Similarly, in beams, if this is the axis of the beam so and the load x this is any load x on the column x on the beam this is any load p magnitude and this x on the beam and it tries to elongate this beam let's suppose it tries to elongate this beam and we have a small deformation of delta here and here so we have a small deformation upon the external load on this beam. So due to this load, again there will be some resistance of the beam in order to take this load. In order to bring this beam into its original position. So this resistance, this resistance to the axial load is known as the axial stiffness of the beam. Similarly, again, the axial stiffness for the beam for, for the beam will also be equal to the E A dividing by L. E is the elasticity of this material used in the beam. A is the cross-sectional area of the beam. And L is the length of this whole beam. So we can also find the axial stiffness of this column. This horizontal load for the beam may be the earthquake load or the wind load. Hope you guys understand what is the axial stiffness and how we can find out the axial, axial stiffness and what are the factors uh, that depends, uh, that axial stiffness depends on. So these are the three factors, the elasticity, area and length. And changing these factors, we can increase or decrease the axial stiffness of the beam or any structure member. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.